Alright, I just wanted to give you guys a short little video here of something that a lot of people aren't aware of. As you can see, I'm using a Kindle Fire HD8 here. This is, I think, $49.99 on Amazon. Got the ads on it, so it's the cheap one. But what we all know is that there's only so much you can do on an Android device. That's not entirely true. So I'm going to show you how you can take and actually tune from an Android device right now. There it is. Looking for TeamViewer. TeamViewer is a free application for personal use, so you don't want to use this for if you're trying to take and make money tuning people's cars remotely or something. But for yourself, it's perfectly fine to use. You do need an internet connection, and you will need a computer that's connected on the other end of this. So what I've done is I've just connected the Kindle tablet to my desktop, and I'm viewing it on my Kindle tablet. The bottom right hand side is a live view being recorded of the tablet screen itself. The main screen here is actually a screen recorder app that's recording the screen of the Kindle Fire so that you guys can see exactly what's going on. This is a small screen. It's rather difficult to see while I'm recording this. So I'm recording the audio after the fact just because I was more concerned with being able to see what I was doing on screen. An 8 inch tablet's really not ideal for this. Something 10 or 12 would be a lot better but if you needed to use an 8 inch it is it is workable. So what I'm going to do here is just open a bin file, select the XDF, go through and make a couple of basic changes. The reason I'm going to take and show you a couple of these changes is I've got some spreadsheets for you guys to use that will make it easier to take and deal with this stuff. First thing we want to do is go in and turn off the security. So we've got a couple of options at the bottom down here. We want to make sure we set it to number two, no VATS present. So we're going to set that at two and then we're going to save it. There's a couple other things on here we can see. We've got attack output. This is the P59, so the pull-up resistor and it's not strong enough. You have to add one externally. On the P01, though, you can turn that pull-up on and off. I'm going to go through here and change the attack pulses so that it works with a normal tack, not the Silverado style and the GMT 800s. We're going to set both of these at 3, and we're going to save it. Electric cooling fan stuff, if you want to change your fans, these XDFs have all the settings for that, so you can go from mechanical to electric, and everything's there to set the fan turn on and off for fan 1 and fan 2, and how it interacts with the air conditioning, so there's no problems there. Alright, there's some stuff in the speedometer I want to go over with you guys. We're going to go down here and choose Imperial. There's a couple of tables in here that we need to look at setting values for that are going to affect everything from shift points to the speedometer to how the vehicle is actually going to perform because if it doesn't know how fast it's going it's going to throw all kinds of things off. So we're going to start with our vehicle speed limiter. It's set at 98 miles an hour. We're going to go ahead and change that to 255. That's effectively removing it. 255 is as high as you can enter. And then we've got vehicle speed sensor pulse per mile. This is going to be a combination of things that affect it, such as tire size, gear ratio, and the number of pulses your transmission is going to output. So we're just going to go ahead and use a spreadsheet for this. I'm going to post a link for it in the bottom. We're going to enter some numbers into it, and it's going to give us the new pulse value that we go ahead and enter in here. And that's going to make sure that everything is working the way it's intended. The last one we need to take and set is our gear ratio. This is just basically the differential ratio in the rear end. So this was originally set for 410s. I'm going to go ahead and alter this for 373s. If we alter it, we'll go ahead and save the value. And then everything for our speedometer and transmission shift points has been set back up to work with whatever application we have this in. So a lot of stuff in this XDF. Uh, I haven't been through this thing in quite a while. I, I don't do a lot of tuning myself. I've been more focused on the programming side of the application than this stuff. There's a lot of stuff you can do in here though. So we're going to go into our vehicle platform options. First thing we're going to do is we're going to enable oil pressure over the data bus. If this is not enabled, you have an app like Torque or Dash Commander or something, you won't be able to read oil pressure. The next thing we're going to do is go in and change the throttle control to a zero, which is going to disable it. This was was originally set up for electronic throttle. We're going to set this file up for cable operation. So we set that at zero. 
Then we go to our transmission range indicator. This is if you have a neutral safety on your transmission, is it, or is it on the column, or do you not have one period? Got a couple options here. I'm gonna set this one at zero, no neutral safety system present, and it's not gonna look for it. So engine diagnostic, we've got some stuff down here at the bottom, DTC processing. We have two types of lists here. You're going to have to work with both of them. Unfortunately, there is no description in Tuner Pro for what each of these codes does. That's because it would take a very long time to enter all that information in. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and post up a uh, little cheat sheet that's got every single code on here and what each code does. You guys can go look these up yourselves, but if you're going to take and go through and start turning codes off for a swap or something, it's going to take you a while to look up all the codes and then jump between them. So I'll just go ahead and give you a sheet that you can print off and look, put it right in front of you, and then you know what you're going. Maybe highlight each one or something for what you want to turn off. When you do these, make sure that you read what you're setting them to. That's the biggest thing is just pay attention to what you're setting the values to. If it's a 0, a 1, a 2, or a 3, there's an application for each of them. If you set it to not enabled, it's just like the computer never came with it, so be careful there. Then we're going to go back and we're just going to save our file here. We want to make sure that when we do it, we do a save as. and We're going to give it a new file name. Probably should actually save your file before you do anything to it, so that way you don't accidentally overwrite your original. Although being that your original is actually on your Android device and not on your desktop, that's not a big deal. TeamViewer is capable of transferring files between your Android device and the desktop and then back to your Android device. I didn't do that here because it's rather hard to see on a small tablet and it would just be confusing for people watching it. This isn't an instructional on how to use TeamViewer. This is just showing you what is possible when you are using it. So there you have it. You can now tune from an Android device as long as you've got an internet connection on it.